Welcome everyone to another coffee tasting. My name is Aaron Taylor and I'm your host. Today we are rediscovering and re-exploring one of the local coffee shops here in downtown Palm Springs called the Gray Coffee Shop. If you guys have not had a chance to check out the Gray Coffee Shop in downtown Palm Springs, I definitely encourage you to do so. Super cool, lots of excellent artsy vibes, and they sell vinyl records. So if you are into vinyl records and uh, music, definitely check out the Gray Coffee Shop. They have a lot of cool merchandise for sale there with their art and their records. And then they also serve some excellent coffee uh, by the Clotch Coffee Company. And so today we are going to be tasting the French roast. So for those of you guys joining me today, welcome. Uh, and if you guys are returning, welcome back. If you haven't had a chance to hit that like and subscribe button down below, please go ahead and do so because every like and subscribe on this channel helps me make it that much more better and to create more content for you guys. So thank you so much for hitting that like and subscribe button. Let's get started. So. On this channel, we like to brew our coffee three different ways. That way we get to explore the different flavor notes of the coffee that come out with the different brew methods. So with a pour over, we're going to get a lot more of those roasty flavors from this French roast. With the Chemex, we're going to get a little bit more of those chocolate and molasses notes, but it's going to be very subtle. And with the French press, we're going to get those intense dark chocolate bitters and that molasses sweetness with of that bright roastiness that we would see on the pour over. With the uh, different brew methods, you get different flavor notes out of the coffee. So that's why it's important to really taste the different notes that you get from the different coffees. Um, that way you get to explore the coffee and really learn the different brew methods that you prefer for different roasts. So with this particular cup of coffee because it's a French roast I think I'm going to like the Chemex that much more because I tend to lean away from those dark, uh, darker coffees and because this coffee has an intense roasty flavor uh, that roasty flavor is not going to be as intense on the Chemex and we're going to get a little bit more of those milk or the dark chocolate and molasses flavors. So when you brew your coffee on a pour over or a Chemex when you add the water, you just want to add a little bit of the water. Just uh, fully submerge all your grinds real quick. Um, get them all wet, and then you want to let your coffee bloom. And what letting your coffee bloom does is it allows the air that's trapped in between the grinds to escape so that you don't create a barrier at the bottom of your filter slowing down the brew process. And this is important because you don't want to slow down your brew process because if you slow down your brew process, you're going to over brew your coffee and it's going to impact the flavor. You're going to get a lot more of those intense bitter notes and it's just going to make for an unpleasant cup of coffee. So making sure that you let your coffee bloom when you brew a pour over or a Chemex is very important. So with this French roast, we are getting notes of chocolate, slight sweet molasses, and some bold roasty flavors. So with this cup of coffee, we're going to it's going to be very dark with those strong roasty flavors that is very traditional to a good French roast. And then with a French roast, it is generally a mix between uh, two different beans. We have, it's like an 80-20 mix. Uh, but with this one, we are doing a Central American coffee and a Southern American coffee. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Central American coffee after we taste this, after we taste this blend. Excellent. So when you brew your coffee, you guys, making sure that you get your grind proportion and water freshness and bean freshness is very important. You don't want stale beans. Uh, you don't want to pour, um, you don't want to under pour your water. You don't want to over pour your water. And then you want to make sure you get the grinds correct as well because the grinds on your coffee is going to impact the flavor and the time of the brew. So when we do a pour over, it's going to be a slightly finer grind than the Chemex. The Chemex is going to be closer to a, a French press, but it's not nearly as coarse as a French press. With the French press, we have like one of the coarsest settings for our coffee. And with this, we have less surface area. 
so it's going to uh, slow down the brewing process because there's less contact with the water with the surface of the coffee but it is a full immersed coffee and has the most contact time with the water so because it has less surface area but more contact with the water it's going to even out those flavors we're going to get a little bit more sediments and more oils as well all right so let's go ahead and plunge our french press cup of coffee and then once we french plunge this french press our pour over should be ready to taste so when we drink our coffee and we do the tastings, we like to, we do it in three steps. We smell the uh, aroma of our coffee to really get those flavors from the aroma. And so when I smell this coffee, the immediate thing that I'm getting from the pour over is that slight molasses sweetness and that bold roasty smell. We're definitely getting those roasty notes from the aroma from this particular cup of coffee. It smells really smooth though. It smells really clean. Wow. So with this cup of coffee, we're getting some intense bright roasty notes right off the bat. It's not overwhelming, but it is definitely like a punch of the tongue letting you know that we're getting some bright roasty notes. Um, and then you, as it starts to clear away, we're starting to get like that molasses sweetness. And then we get that dark chocolate bitter flavor as well. But that dark intense roasty flavor really latches onto the sides of our tongue. So we're, we're really getting those roasty lingering flavors. It's almost reminiscent to like a, like a campfire. Um, so it's like if you're sitting in front of a, a nice warm campfire, you're out camping, this would be a great cup of coffee to drink because you're uh, getting that natural feel of uh, if it's cold outside, You've got not just a warm cup of coffee, but you've got a warm cup of coffee that has those notes that makes you feel uh, like a roasty warmness. Really good. I'm not that big of a fan of those roasty notes, but that is nice and smooth, not too intense. All right. So now we're going to do the Chemex. With the Chemex, the Chemex is a triple paper filter, and then we use a slightly coarser grind on the Chemex than we do the paper filter. So with the triple paper filter, we're going to catch more of those sediments and more of those oils. And with the coarser grind, there's less surface area as well. So the brew process is slowed down a little bit because of the triple paper filter. So the coarse, slightly coarser grind isn't going to have that much of an impact. But the triple paper filter is going to have a major impact on the flavor of the coffee because we're filtering out more of those sediments and more of those oils. So it's going to make it a much smoother and much cleaner cup of coffee. So as I smell it, we're definitely getting more of those dark chocolate notes from the Chemex. We still get those roasty notes as well, but we're definitely smelling a lot more of those chocolate notes. We didn't really smell the chocolate notes or even taste the chocolate notes that much on the pour over the uh, roasty flavor really drove the cup so that is really good so with the chemex we're still getting that intense roasty flavor right off the bat but it's not as bright as it was on the pour over because we're getting only those bright roasty notes with this, we're getting those roasty notes, but we're getting that dark chocolate bitter flavor alongside of it. So it brings down those roasty notes a little bit, making them not as bright, almost citrusy like they are on the pour over. So it makes the roasty notes a little bit more subtle because we're tasting those chocolate notes. And then as that flavor washes away, we get that slight molasses sweetness. And the sweetness is coming from the fact that we're getting all those bitter flavors at the very beginning, like those dark roasty notes and those bitter dark chocolates. And as it clears away, our, we get that sweet flavor. And that sweet flavor is just in contrast to the bitter notes that was bombarding our tongue moments ago. That is really, really good. I like the Chemex on the French roast. Um, 
nice and smooth. We get those nice uh, dark chocolate notes alongside those roasty notes. And as it clears away, we get that molasses sweetness. Really good. So now we're going to try the French press. With the French press, we're going to get a lot more of those oils, a lot more of those sediments. So it's going to impact the flavor of the cup of coffee more. We're going to get more intense flavors. It's going to be a very balanced cup of coffee like the Chemex is. But those notes that we get in the Chemex are going to be on a much higher level. So we get that same balanced cup of coffee, but the notes are more predominant. So as we smell the French press, we get a lot of those dark chocolate aromas. The uh, roasty notes don't come through as much, uh, but that's just from the aroma. We, we're definitely getting a lot more of those dark chocolate notes, and that's from the, the increased amount of sediment. Ooh, that's really good. So just like I said, with the French press, we're getting those intense roasty notes. But then because we are getting those intense chocolate notes as well, those intense roasty notes don't taste as intense as it should be because it's balancing itself out. So like the pour over, we're primarily tasting those roasty notes. So it tastes a little bit intense. The roasty notes are a little bit overwhelming because it's driving the cup of coffee, not really sharing uh, what what I say the front seat with the other notes so with the French press we really have the dark chocolate notes kind of more or less taking the wheel of the cup of coffee and those roasty notes are in the passenger seat or the co-pilot seat helping drive the car but in the French press it is really really good because we're getting a lot more of those dark chocolate notes which give us gives us a lot of those dark bitters and as our mouth washes the, the palate washes away, we get those nice sweet molasses flavor. And the French press tastes much sweeter than the Chemex because of those intense bitter notes are that much stronger on the French press. So as the palate clears uh, and the flavors start to wash away, that intense bitterness that's impacting our tongue uh, starts to taste sweet. So we do get that uh, sweet effect from the Chemex as well, but because the flavors and the bitterness isn't as intense as it is on the Chemex, it doesn't taste as sweet. But because of the contrast in bitters to not bitter on the French press is so intense, as the palate starts to clear, we that molasses sweetness tastes more sweet. Really good. I thought I was going to like the Chemex more, on the on this particular French roast because the French roast is really really a uh, really dark coffee but this particular French roast makes for a really good French French press cup of coffee because we get those intense dark chocolate notes and that's one of my favorite flavor notes of a good cup of coffee is if we can get some really dark chocolate notes and what that does is it makes the coffee taste sweet after the fact because as those bitters start to wash away, the contrast of the bitters versus the bitters exiting gives that sweet flavor. Really, really good, you guys. So, my preferred brew on the Clutch Coffee French Roast is going to be the French Press. If you guys do like that, brighter roasty flavor I would definitely go with the pour over if you do like that lighter cup of coffee but you do like those roasty milk chocolate notes I would go with the Chemex because we're getting those lighter notes still really really strong and bold but it is much cleaner on the Chemex and then with the French press my favorite preferred brew because we're getting those intense dark chocolate notes alongside with those roasty notes and as the palate washes away we get that sweet molasses flavor really good so with the clutch coffees french roast it is uh, a mixture of the central american coffee and south american coffee so we're going to talk a little bit about central american coffee because it's some of my my favorite coffees uh out there 
And so we have the uh, Costa Rica, which is one of the Central American uh, coffee producers. And they have a couple cool stories um, that come out of Costa Rica. So one of my favorite stories is the Costa Rica Naranjo. I'm going to link a video in the description down below so you can watch that particular coffee tasting. Um, but with Costa Rica Naranjo, uh, we have uh, coffee making its, ways to, making its way to Costa Rica from uh, Spain. And when uh, Spanish colonists made it, made their way to Costa Rica, they brought with them ox carts. And when they first started using ox carts in Costa Rica to transport their beans, the coffee demand wasn't as high as it is today. So they would actually use people. The farmers would pull the ox carts themselves. They didn't use oxen at the time. And then because of the rugged terrain of the area, the spoke wheels on the ox cart wheels would break all the time. You know, you'd go over a rock or uneven terrain and you would slam the right wheel down and then the wooden spoke would break. And this would happen so much because the terrain in Costa Rica is so rugged. So something that the farmers and the Spanish settlers in this area did was they took the inspiration of the Aztec wheel, which is a disc, and they replaced the wooden spoke wheels with this new disc wheel. So with the Costa Rican farmers, we have a Spanish invention of the ox cart and the inspiration of the disc wheel to help create a better um, working uh, quality of life improvement for the ox carts. And then as time goes on, uh, farmers would paint their ox carts different colors with different geometric patterns. And so... Uh, when you saw a specific ox cart with different geometric patterns and different colors, you knew which farm that cart belonged to and kind of like a flag on a boat. And so, um, and then time goes on even more and uh, this became so much part of the culture that to this day uh, they have art festivals in Costa Rica where everyone comes together and they bring their ox carts and they show off the different colors and different geometric patterns and they just get to share uh, their culture with each other. So super cool. This is one of my favorite stories because it can show us how coffee has impacted the culture of different people and how just over a short period of time it has really influenced different types of art. Uh, and help the community come together and share their passion for coffee, art, ge geometric patterns, and the culture that they grew up with, with the ox carts. So, really cool. We go into a little bit more detail in the Costa Rica Naranjo story uh, in the video that is going to be linked down below. I hope you guys enjoyed today's coffee tasting where we got to try the Clotch Coffee's French Roast. And if you guys are visiting Palm Springs or if you are uh, local to Palm Springs, I encourage you to visit the Gray Coffee, Gray Coffee House in downtown Palm Springs. Um, super cool vibe, lots of art stuff to look at, and then they also have lots of vinyl records if you guys are into vinyl records. Um, super cool. I would be into vinyl records if I had a vinyl record player but I just don't and just don't have the resources to invest in that kind of thing right now. Maybe one day though, maybe one day I can, you know, start supporting the great coffee shop by, you know, buying some of the, some of my favorite music off, off online. So thanks again, everyone for joining me on today's coffee tasting. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below. It does help me create better and more content for you guys and you guys do appreciate the information that i'm sharing with you today also support me on patreon patreon is a way for you guys to tip me for the information that i share with you guys if you guys appreciate the knowledge learning about the culture and the history of the farmers the you guys can join my patreon which is pretty much basically a once a month tip that tips me for all the information that i share with you guys and helps me uh invest more in this channel so thanks again, everyone, for joining me. Join me this Friday as we do a, uh, we're going to do a comparison of coffee. So we're going to try 
three different French roasts. We're going to do the French roast from Cost Coffee, Starbucks, and then we're also going to do the Stumptown French roast. And we're going to see which one we like best. So join me this Friday as we do a French roast smashdown. If you enjoyed today's coffee tasting and you want to learn a little bit more about the Costa Rica coffee, hit the link above. That is going to be the specific coffee tasting that I did for Costa Rica Naranjo. The link down below is going to be the coffee tasting that I did for the Grey Coffee Shop last time where we tried the Crazy Goat, the origin of all coffee itself. Thanks again everyone for joining me in today's coffee tasting and have a great day.